Good evening. Good evening. We welcome all who are gathered here for worship at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. May all who walk through our door know that God loves them. You have entered the house of the Lord. Out of respect, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Our celebrant for this liturgy is Father Bob Miller, with our pastor, Father John Roshofsky, Father Michael Marinowski, and Father Joe Uzar as concelebrants, assisted by Deacon Dave Witter. Today we celebrate the commemoration of all the faithful departed and observe our annual All Souls Day Mass of Remembrance. We come together to remember all who have died, particularly our deceased loved ones whom we mourn whose memory we honor, and whose lives we value. We pray for them, trusting in God's mercy and in Jesus' promise that he is the resurrection and the life. Let us pray on this holy day for our dearly departed that they may rest in eternal peace with the Lord. We begin by singing from the Red Breaking Bread hymnal, number 497. Come, follow me in the Red Breaking Bread, number 497.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with Sisters and brothers, we join with the whole church throughout the world this day in praying for our beloved dead. Let us call once more upon God's great mercy for all of our loved ones who have died and for all of us, the living. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if in the sight of others indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastened a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm may be found in the Blue Gather Hymnal at number 35. Shepherd me, O God, in the Blue Gather Hymnal number 35. Yeah. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. And I think uh, all of us uh, who gather here tonight need to thank all those who have worked so hard in preparing this liturgy for us on this Feast of All Souls. And I ask you folks tonight to, to look around, please, at one another. Notice each other tonight, all of you here, because you all have a bond. You all gather here tonight in a unified purpose and a common experience because all of you this past year have buried someone that you love. 
And this is an experience that is, well, what, how do you describe it? I, I, I want to use the word awful, not awful, but, but you know, awe-filled, full of awe, filled with awe and mystery and wonder. In the depth of this experience that you have gone through, its weight, its cost, uh, all that you have experienced and all you have survived. The death of a loved one is an experience that, that defies simple explanation. It's an experience whose memory you always carry with you. You never forget it. It's never gone. And so I wonder then in the light of that experience that each of you have, have known, I, I wonder tonight and I want to ask you in the experience of the burial of your loved one, what did you learn? What did that experience teach you? What do you take away from it? What did God in his love and mercy show you about him, about your loved one, about faith, about our belief in eternal life? I wonder things like, for instance, not leaving things unsaid. The possibility of a new realization then of how deep grief can really, really be. Or a lesson in the importance of going to funeral homes and sending cards and notes, how important that is. Or wonder about the capacity of the heart to be able to feel so much love and so much pain simultaneously and still be able to go on. Lessons in learning to forgive and let go of past hurts. A lesson maybe in the realization of how important uh, the funeral rites are to help us to say goodbye to our loved ones. Might you have learned maybe that physical suffering can even be worse than death? Did you learn maybe the power of faith and the great comfort of God's love? and that you can still feel their love and still feel their presence in your life, even though they're not there next to you physically. Oh, these friends are only a few of the possibilities. I, I, I can't guess. I, I don't know what you have experienced, what you have internalized, and are still probably <laughs> working on and internalizing. Because, you know, as you have learned, and we all know, grief is a process. Grief isn't something we get over. It's not like a surgery or a cold, you know, that you get past and get through. You learn to live with it. You learn to adjust to it. But it's, but it's something, it's, it, it's an experience that can flare up in a flash, in a memory, a song, a smell, anything, anything. All of a sudden we can be back, boom, you know, at the moment that they died. Everyone, everyone will absorb different truths from the experience of the death of a loved one. We're all unique. We're all going to do this differently. But one truth, one truth I hope above all for you is that wherever you might be in the process of grieving, I hope you have learned that God is with you in it. You are not alone. You know, I, I discovered after my parents' deaths, and they were, they were five years apart, that the funeral was not the hardest part. Not at all. The funeral and all of its rites and everything, that, you were, that was actually rather comforting and kind of beautiful in a way. But the flowers wilt, and the food is eaten, and the thank you notes are sent. And everyone who truly loved you and supported you and were wonderful to you in the process of the funeral, they go back to work. They go back to their lives. They go back to normal, as they should. But what is normal for you now? What, you know, what is the new normal? And it may even seem sometimes like the people who were so supportive, like they get to the point like they don't want to hear about our loss anymore. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Yet Jesus does. 
Jesus is always there with us. He always wants to hear about our pains and our sorrows and, and our losses, whatever they are, in any situation, in any human experience that we have. Jesus wants to hear that from us. And that, my friends, is one of the most important truths to which we can cling in our lives, that Jesus wants to hear us. You know, I often say this in the confessional, and probably from the pulpit too, more than I, more than I want to remember, but uh, honestly, the most important thing I ever learned about prayer was that prayer does not have to be pretty. Prayer needs to be truthful, not pretty. We go to God as we are, not as we want to be, or wish we were, or somebody else tells me I should be. We go to him, we go to God in our prayer exactly as we are with whatever it is we happen to be carrying. So friends, wherever you are in the grieving process, please, please don't be afraid. Feel the pull, feel the magnet of Jesus' love and take your feelings to him no matter what. So on this, on this All Souls Night, this great feast in the church. Um, number one, you know, your parish prays for you and remembers you and thinks about you, hence this night. And secondly, we all together entrust our loved ones to the love, to the mercy of our God. You still love them, my friends, and they still love you. And one day we will all be together again. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. End of October 2022, Ellen Wagner, Laverne Unger, Egbert Few, Arlene Godomsky, Carol Joyce Benjerovic, Lynn Harvey, Norbert Widener Sr., Gregory Cole. November 2022, Clarence Bud Gepner. Patricia Wilker, Charles Seske, Madeline Femke, Dorothy Kimmack, Mary Alice Penrod, Joseph Babica, Wallace Kluber, Pietro Di Pietro, Jacqueline Kasarsha, Sally Ogden, Ludmilla Tegi. December 2022, Loma Walsack, Marta Russell, Noreen O'Mahony, Thomas Relihan, Mary Hine, Lucy Bamig. Christine Jones, Mary Bear, Dorothy Rossi, Arlene G. McCalmont. January 2023, William Lyons, Rita Bruner, Jean R. Peluso, John P. Connolly, Elizabeth Ann Etter, Thomas G. Exler, Elizabeth Joanne Greiser, John K., Mary Elizabeth Fricker, Janice Cole, 
Frank J. Thomas, Frank J. Kappen, Doris Pierce, Richard P. Kuda, Kimberly Ann Oceani, John M. Colbert, Jr., Thomas A. Britt, Jr., Mildred Williamson, Fern Wessel, Dorothy Schoper, Matthew Kotick. February 2023, Carol Lee Carlin, Thomas J. White, Michael Delahunty, Margaret Stazer Cobus, Robert Zatazalo, Martha Pliskaner, Antoinette Latari, Carl Davis, Teresa C. Ruperto, Robert T. Schwer, Ronald Kramer, Jane Schmidt, Jean Kay, Teresa Gallagher, William Schenker, Greg Lokar. March 2023. Barbara A. McGurgan, Patricia McCarthy, Richard Scherer, Roger Fabra, Lois Krebs, Joseph C. Emilio, Mildred Garvey, Aldo A. DeVecchio, Patrick Sullivan Sr., Anna J. Phillip, Rosemary Flaherty, James Ruperto, Teresa Cress, Robert J. Labrit Sr., Marjean Zamperini, Dina S Sutermaster, Augustine Rossi, William Gretsch, Matilda Lamastro, Jean Sobolski. Paul Bianchi, Anna Marie Chris, John Horsing, Dolores Rice, Richard Tabin, Rita Gallagher, Thomas Houston, John J. Miller, Thomas Bunty. Floris M. Schillinger, Ronald P. Wittig Sr., Mary Brody, Joseph M. McBurney, Herman E. Wyshofsky, Philip Swatolsky, Edward C. Smyers Jr. May 2023, Patricia M. Kowalik, Paul Seitz, Beverly Riggs, Judy A. Fallett, Michael Rogers, Martin R. Stanton, Arthur Heinzinger, Hilda Dax, David Sheff, Eleanor Marshall, Thomas Jackson. June 2023, Catherine Paris, Marie Mulbauer, Patricia Huckstein, Patricia Kennedy Checa, Dorothy Krepp, Elizabeth Bauer, James Kosis, Kurt Haas, Madeline Collins, Arthur Wonderly, James Marinowski. July 2023, Frank Rao. Rose Muller, Norma, Norbert J. Wessel, Richard Smith, Ann Schuker, Richard M. Burtnett, Edward Monroe, Arthur D Albert J. Schwartzbauer. August 2023,
Carol Mammy, Dorothy R. Maris, Cecilia M. Rock, Linda Broski, Elizabeth McGuire, Lois F. Buczek. September 2023, Robert Mixa, Louis Nudy, Ruth E. Finnegan, Margaret Rogers, Mary Roronsky, Mary Hartman, John L. Goggin, Donald Blau, Catherine Bellisteri, David C. Wakalkas, Paul Retger, Gerda Bummer, Frank Susacek, Kevin B. P. Garrity, Joseph E. Pace, and Ronald W. Shipman, Sr. We sing together from the Blue Gather Hymnal number 981. The hand of God shall hold you in the Blue Gather number 981. consoles us in our grief and gives us hope in our despair. Let us turn out to the source of our consolation with all our needs. Please, please respond, merciful Lord, hear our prayer for the church that we may be strengthened in faith and hope so that the witness we give may console all those who mourn. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all who mourn the death of a loved one, especially those who have lost close family or friends over the past year, that they may find consolation and hope in the promise of resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the terminally ill and for all those who care for the dying, doctors, nurses, chaplains, caregivers, and all those who work in the hospice care, 
that they may be strengthened and sustained in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for all who have died and their loved ones in mourning, funeral directors, cemetery workers, parish ministers, and grief counselors, that they may be blessed and treasured in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that this, that this day of the dead may be a time of special closeness and sweet remembrance of our loved ones as they celebrate their new life in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, and that in the fullness of time they may be raised up to eternal life in the presence of our Lord, and for the intention of this Mass for the deceased members of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish, we pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. O God of life, though for a time we are separated from those who have died, we know that in your Son we find life forever. Grant the prayers we make today, grant forgiveness to the loved ones we have lost, and grant mercy to us who remain so that in the fullness of time we may enjoy eternal life with them in your presence forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare the altar with the gifts of bread and wine, we sing from the Red Breaking Bread Book, number 528, Christ in Me Arise, number 528, in Breaking Bread.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good all souls be cherished. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed servants. For you purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of dawn of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven 
And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When you wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all, age, for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom is shown the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the Lord's table, we sing from the Blue Gather Hymnal, number 872, I Will Be the Vine, in the Blue Gather Books, number 872.
the body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness, he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead, a place of light and peace. Amen. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. We go forth singing from the Blue Gather Hymnal number 871. We shall rise again in the Blue Gather Hymnal number 871. Please join us in singing all five verses.